And hold on, mine too. And we're live. Let me turn it this way. No, this way. Right there. Okay. And I'm going to put this. Uh, I forgot where I had put it. Oh, no, I can see myself. <laughs> like double screened. It's so cool. Yeah. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Um, roses behind the scenes, but here I am. We got something really good for you today. I'm here. Hey. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, uh, what, this is the first Ask Rosa of the year. It is. And I feel like we have a lot of good things coming this year. Oh, yeah. And we're going to start it off with probably one of my favorite dishes. And it's a spicy shrimp taco. But not your regular spicy. It's going to be more of like a teriyaki Asian blend spicy. And for those who like Chinese food and those who like uh, Asian food, this is like a perfect little out the box of your regular type of taco and kind of exploring into something better. A little healthier, I guess. I'm, I'm really excited. <laughs> so I'll, uh, I'll get to the ingredients super easy. We have most of them at the house already. And what pretty much is the primary is going to be cabbage which we're still in cabbage season. So I would highly recommend getting something that's in season. We have red onion, jalapeno, cilantro, and shrimp that I've already chopped up into kind of like quarter inch pieces. Yep. But I chose to do shrimp because for the new year, we always think about eating something healthy. And we always try to like lean off of eating greasy food and I thought it would be cool to promote something a little bit on the lighter side so I chose shrimp but this is something that you can use all proteins uh, chicken beef shrimp even fish if you wanted to do like a white fish taco but um yeah that's Rosa oh sorry so uh, before we do start, um, some fascinating information about shrimp is that they're very low in calories and saturated fat, much less than actual chicken. And it's actually very rich in calcium, which... I didn't know that. I didn't know that at all. Yeah. I just like shrimp because you find it on sale. Mm -hmm. It's already frozen. So if you're just pulling out portions of that, you're actually saving it for multiple meals as opposed to buying it fresh where you have to use it within like two days or else right. it starts to smell. So buying frozen shrimp is actually a smarter way if you're looking to have multiple meals along the way. Um, so actually, maybe we should bring up about the cleaning of the shrimp. Yes, if you wanna hand me the bag. So most bags of shrimp are gonna look like this. Um, pretty straightforward in different types of colors, but what you're gonna look for is this word, this word de-veined. And that pretty much means that they cleaned the vein that goes to the top of the shrimp. And that's pretty much the how poop, I, poop vein, <laughs> I, for lack of a better word. <laughs> but whatever. It's, it's not what you want in your shrimp is what I'm trying to say. So if you have the opportunity to buy shrimp, please look for this word de-veined. And that means it is already cleaned for you. And you'll notice that. By, uh, uh, it has a butterfly look on the top of it because it's been split. If it's not deveined, it's going to have a round top. And it's not, what we're looking for is that cut over the top. So you'll get that brown, blackish line going across. And, and nobody wants that. Gonna nobody give it a wants dirty, that. grainy texture to it. Right. Nobody wants that. So please take it from Rosa and I, devein your shrimp. Buy D vein shrimp. Don't eat the poop. poop. And if you can't afford the D vein shrimp, you can buy the whole shrimp with the shell on. Just cut it open through the back and just pull out the poop. It's super easy. <laughs> and again, if you have any questions, you can always ask Rosa. You can find me at restaurant flavors underscore on Instagram. You can Google it. You can find it. Just please clean, clean your shrimp. Um, okay. Now that that's off and we can eat clean literally yeah <laughs> uh, i also am using some teriyaki sauce straight from the bottle um i like this one because it's a korean barbecue sauce it's a little zestier it's not as sweet and um 
This is something we should always just have in our cabinet. It's just a fun sauce with chicken, with teriyaki beef. If you want to do a beef and broccoli, if you want to do a chicken teriyaki with white rice, I highly suggest having teriyaki sauce in your cabinet. If they really want to make the tacos and they don't have it, what are the basic ingredients for them to make a teriyaki sauce? So if you didn't, if, if you didn't want to buy this, the easiest way to make a teriyaki sauce is soy sauce, onion, garlic, a little bit of sugar, and just a little bit of vinegar. That's all it is. And whether you want to add more sugar, you can, or depending on your sweetness, some people like it more tart. It's all up to you. Uh, but as far as convenience goes, you know, a quick bottle on hand is, is, is just about right. And then I made a sriracha mayo sauce. And it's a cinch, it's really literally just that. It's one part mayo, one part sriracha. And I have this kind of, kind of orange a little yeah. bit, right? So I have this kind of orange color. If you want it spicier, you're going to add more sriracha. If you're more of a mayo lover, you'll do the opposite. If you don't like mayo at all, because there are people out there yeah. that do not like mayonnaise. And, um, hey, that's on you. Just omit the mayonnaise. <laughs> Just take the mayonnaise out, a little bit of sriracha over the top, perfectly fine. Um, if you want to go as far as making, like, a different kind of sauce with it, you can add that homemade teriyaki sauce that you did make. Let's say you made that homemade teriyaki sauce. A little squirt of the sriracha in there will kind of give you a spicier hit with that without having to add too many ingredients. But I, I thought this one would be fun because we have most of the stuff in house. You know, oh, yeah. we usually always have mayonnaise. We usually always, always have some kind of sriracha or hot sauce. So combining ingredients that we're usually not used to mixing kind of makes a fun, a fun thing. This is definitely a meal fun for the kids, for sure. And fun for us. I'm really excited. So let's get to it. Super easy. This is definitely like one of those like quick on the fly meals if you're just rushing home, quick thaw with a shrimp. So what we're going to start, um, in our pan, we have a little bit of oil. Uh, here at Food Link, we use the best stainless steel pans. Most people at home have nonstick pans. So it's a little bit easier to cook meats and fish because they won't stick. Right. In this case, you're going to want to get your pan kind of warm. You're going to want to add a good amount of oil and create a coat on the bottom of the pan. This technique is called seasoning. This is when you're creating that nonstick layer on the bottom of your pan. This is going to give you nice color, good char. Um, and honestly, this is teaching you how to utilize your pans that most people kind of just we throw these in the back, you know what yeah. I mean? Because when, when we want to make eggs and we don't have our favorite pan, we usually turn to this pan and it's just a hot mess and it, and it sticks and we're frustrated. And yeah, so take your time. Don't work off too much heat. Season the pan on the bottom. If Rosa can confirm, there's like a nice coat on the bottom. Oh, yeah. It looks like it's kind of has a, a little layer and we're not using a lot of oil. So Again, I'm on a medium heat, a little bit of oil, get it nice and coat. I'm gonna turn up my pan to about, say like medium, low, medium. And we're gonna start with onions and jalapenos. And then real quick, we will be doing a whole new season of Quick Tip with Chef Sam on YouTube yes. later on. And we're gonna go over seasoning a pan for those of you that might wanna learn how to do this. Yes. And you know, what I love about Quick Tips, quick tips is that these are things that we kind of forget about in the heap of the moment. Sorry, the jalapeno wants to make me cough. But, <laughs> so we're cooking jalapenos right now, so you're going to have to mind us. It smells great. It's just, I got the whiff and it's spicy, but. You know, I'm good. I've been cooking for 10 years, and things like cutting an overripe onion or cooking with peppers, I'm, I'm immune to it. And it's funny when I cook, when I cook next to like a home cook. <laughs> And you see the reaction, the different reactions, and we're like, I'm, I'm handling this, and I could tell Rose is like, she loves jalapenos, don't get me wrong, but it is like, it's pretty, it's pretty strong. It so, smells great. Yes. And this is what you want, is to infuse the flavors we're going to be using on the toppers of our tacos to throw into our shrimp. So we're not going to cook this all the way. We just want to get it to where you're fragrant. Can you feel it, Rosa? Oh, she can feel it. So we're, then we're going to add in the diced shrimp. Yes. We're going to add in the diced shrimp, kind of work that a little bit. And the shrimp's going to absorb all that little oil that we had in the pan. So just come around and 
just give it just a quick little hit of oil. We want to get a little fry on this. So if your pan isn't like, you want to hear a high noise. I don't feel like we're high enough. You know, and we can hear yeah. the sizzle, but we want, we definitely want it to be working a little bit hotter. So and you know, that's like another thing too, listening to your pan, because your pan's going to talk to you. I know how that weird that sounds, but like your pan's going to talk to you and you're going to, whether it's not hot enough or it's too hot or, you know, pay attention to the noises that's coming from your pan. Can we um, give our audience a little knowledge on cooking the seafood? Because I think a lot of people are shy on cooking seafood. Yeah, whether it's cooked enough. Yeah. Right. Okay, so with shrimp, you'll start to, let's see. So the, it's only been in the pan for what, like 30 seconds? And you're already going to start to see some orange on there and a little bit of opaque, like transparency in the middle. What we're going to look for is completely solid through the shrimp where there's no transparency at all. And it's that nice, it's that nice bright orange. Um, so when it's done though, it depends on the size of your shrimp. So if you're going to keep it whole, you're going to sear it one side, three minutes, one side, three minutes done. And that's what's great about what you did here that you cut it into smaller pieces. Yes. So it's going to help if you're in doubt about cooking the shrimp, Cutting into smaller pieces will get you out of doubt. Yes, and it will ensure that your shrimp is cooked all the way through. Um, as far as, you know, substitution, if you wanted to use chicken, throw your peppers and onions in, add your chicken. If you want to do beef, it's the same application. It's just today we want to do shrimp a little That's bit true. leaner. Get that calcium, you know what I mean? So, okay. So I, I'm just working it. Nice and slow and low. Um, the pan is turned up, so I'm just waiting for it to kind of start to talk to me a little bit. In that time, the, the toppings for the tacos are very, very, very easy. Fresh cabbage, fresh cilantro, fresh onion, just fresh ingredients. Um, and most of this you probably already have in your fridge. Yes. <laughs> and also, too, having cabbage and having these fresh whole ingredients helps it's nutrition you're oh, yeah. you're not taking away things by cooking it you're just throwing it on for a nice crispy and i love cabbage yeah. i love onion you know and i love that crisp that it gives to it so um it's it's really up to you if you're debating on substituting the cabbage for lettuce i would definitely try to keep the cabbage because not only does it add some texture and crunch to your tacos but it gives it a lot of nutritional value to it as well yes and it's in season and again, you know, we're paying attention to the vegetables that are in season. So, you know, it, it's little steps. It's not necessarily changing your entire diet. It's just adding the fresh ingredients that kind of make you feel like you're doing the part. You know what I mean? Oh, we have some guests on. Hey, everybody. <laughs> again, welcome. Happy New Year. It smells great in here. It's uh, Yes, it does. So, so far, if you just got on, um, it, all he has in the pan right now is some onion, jalapenos, and the shrimp, and it smells amazing. So, and it does. It really does. It does. And again, like I promote, I don't salt things right in the beginning, and this is a good time to salt thing. Uh, to salt your item is when it's kind of done releasing the moisture. It's done working that first initial part and you can start to add the salt to help absorb it during that time. So as it's finishing cooking and it's, you can like, I wish you guys were here with us because you can see that the shrimp visually is starting to be a little bit more whole in color. And there's a few pieces that are transparent, but for the most part, visually, you can tell that it's starting to become, you know, finished. Um, I'm gonna start with just a little sprinkle of salt, maybe two. Now that's a salt and pepper mix, It's right? a little salt and pepper mix. I do this at home. I do 80% pepper, 20% salt. And that gives me the perfect blend. Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, also too, cutting your shrimp into pieces gives you larger, like it stretches out your portions. Oh yeah. So if you were to keep this full, like whole cuts of shrimp, it wouldn't look as much. But the fact that we're breaking it down gives us a little bit more to work with like for the kids or for the family, or if you just like eating tacos, this just gives you that. All right, so 
This is about 80% done. And you'll see that it's mostly all orange. There's a few spots that are a little opaque, but why I'm telling you we're done now is that we're gonna add the teriyaki sauce to it. And it's important that you do it at this point and not in the beginning because this is high in sugar. Right. So actually making your own teriyaki sauce would be better. But the fact that we're using this as higher in sugar, you're gonna use this towards the end where you're not having to have so much heat in your pan. And for those of you that just got on, you can use any teriyaki sauce. Yes. So I also, you know, I'm keeping my heat at a controlled and I'm just tossing the shrimp just lightly in the teriyaki sauce. It smells good. And just seeing this reminds me of fried rice. It reminds me just of like Panda Express, um, Tabanyaki. All right, so we have a little boil, as you can see. Let that work. You're at a point now to where you can honestly put this to the side and let that coast. And now that you have, you know, you we're almost done on this side. Now we have a fresh pan to work our tortillas. They always have to be cooked. Oh, definitely. Right. Right. Don't microwave them. Please. No, don't. Please. <laughs> For Rosa and I, do not microwave your tortillas. And if you want to use flour instead of corn for whatever reason, please warm up your flour tortillas as yes. well. <laughs> Rule of thumb, just warm it up on a pan. Yeah. So same situation here. The same the, the pan that I was over here has a little bit of oil in it, um, a little bit of heat. We're not going to need that much heat because we're just warming them up. Right. So I'm going to just start with as many as it fills for the pan, oh, which is four. But also, too, if you're just wanting to have a nice little party with your friends, this is perfect to impress them with something easy, yet it's delicious. And that's the whole part of cooking is not – it's not necessarily the shortcuts. It's – making it easy for yourself. Things that we already have in our house, things that we don't really look at the same. So switch it up sometimes. It's de it'll definitely be worth it for you. And if you don't want to use tortillas because you're trying to go on a low carb diet, you can definitely use like a lettuce wrap. Or take this mixture, put it on your plate, throw all your shrimp on top of that, top it with your sauce, garnish it with whatever you want and eat a plate of just shrimp and cabbage. It's a salad. It's a salad. <laughs> it's a salad. So, quick flip. Do you like yours crispy or how do I'll you like yours? For the crispy okay. Side. So, I'm just going to flip one because it didn't give us the color we wanted. And boom. Um, yeah, I'm happy for this new year, guys, because Rosa and I have been brainstorming and we've been thinking about what we can do for you guys. And we want to start getting you guys involved and maybe, you know, give us some things that you want to see us cook, you know, because we can do this all day. But if you got something out there and you want us to do it, let, let her know. know. Let her know. And I'll be more than happy to show you how to do whatever it is that you want to do. And that's the whole point of this program is to literally show you how easy it is to make it happen for you. If you have any nutrition question, if you want a healthier version of anything, let us know. We will make this work for you. Yes. Yes. Um, it's what we love to do. You know, food is food is our life. There you okay. go. Okay. Now we're getting a little, we're getting that <laughs> color. And home style, use your hands. But we're in a kitchen. We have utensils. I can't use That's how I feel. <laughs> but I'm going to be proper because use, utilizing your... Utensils is just as important as having them in your kitchen. Right. So, but we all know we're home style. All right. Um, f we'll do four because that's the only plate we have. Okay. But we'll be doing more later. Um, but yeah, you guys, again, we love eating. <laughs> that's as easy as it is. And I think all of us do. And we love eating food that makes us happy. And we love eating food that's colorful. And when we think about how complicated that can be, we get a little intimidated by it. And when you take a step back and you watch an episode, Ask Rosa, you'll see that, boom, 
And how long have we been only been on for what? 20 minutes, maybe? If that? You think it's been 20? <laughs> We're almost ready to eat. That's how fast it's been. I really hope this recipe encourages you guys to cook, cook seafood because I do believe a lot of people are shy about cooking with seafood. Yes, I, I agree. And I'll, I'll do another uh, pan swap, but just look how delicious this shrimp is. And it's just saucy. It has a beautiful glaze to it. Um, a little bit of spice, a little bit of sweetness. It's diced up perfect. And we didn't take any time to make this at all. Just a little bit of prep. Okay, so let's plate up. Yes. The best time of the but the best time of the episode is to plate up. Okay. So we'll line up our tortillas. And I'll just do three on the plate so it doesn't look overcrowded. Darn. I know. <laughs> I know. And what we're going to do is, is just come, just like we all have done this before, just come down with your, whether it's shrimp, chicken, beef, whatever it is that you decide to cook from this recipe, put it down. And, I mean, this looks delicious. I, I mean, the glaze on the shrimp is amazing. We were talking about this before we started that I have to focus, but I get so mesmerized by the food. It's hard when you start making things with color, it's hard to take that step. You just appreciate it. And I think that's what it is, you know? So we'll take a little bit of that fresh cabbage mix that we have on top. And this is gluten free. This is, um, if you didn't want to add the mayonnaise, it can easily be dairy free. Um, so let's see. We'll do a little bit of, do you mind grabbing a spoon? And then we'll do a little bit of the sauce. And again, if you didn't, if you don't want mayonnaise, just choose, choose just sriracha. But this combination, I'm telling you, is just a, a flavor bomb. Okay, and then fresh jalapeno. Yeah. Okay. Then we'll top it with some fresh jalapeno. That is beautiful. And then I love fresh cilantro, even though we have fresh cilantro already in it. Just a couple sprigs, just to impress whoever you're eating or, or yourself. You know, it's all about, it's all about treating yourself too. And there it is, the spicy shrimp tacos with the fresh slaw, sriracha mayo, and some garnish. You don't have to add jalapeno if you don't want to. If you don't want cilantro, you don't have to add it. You can do whatever you want, and this is just a baseline recipe. Again, chicken, beef, shrimp, fish, tortilla, no tortilla, cabbage, no cabbage. It's all up to you. Thank you. And I think we're at the time, Rosa. Oh, I'm ready. Where you have to approve of the food. Again, hit us up if you have any questions about what we're doing or if you want to see something and be inspired and just enjoy cooking, right? I can't tell you enough how this much good. this recipe hits. This is really good. It's easy. It's simple. It's you know, different than what we're usually eating with shrimp. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. You know, so tr get out the box a little bit. Um, you guys are always welcome to hit us up. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, again, I'm Chef Sam. This is Rosa. <laughs> okay, real quick. Can you talk about it? I can definitely talk about okay. it. it is, the flavors are beautiful. Mm -hmm. You get a little hint of the sweetness, and you got a little kick from the jalapeno and you got the crunch from the cabbage and the cilantro just give it like it just blends it together isn't that sriracha mayo just kind of like oh, it's creamy, creamy. It's, just, it's great isn't it, it great. it's such an easy recipe so uh i hope you guys find yourself on our page doing this one i highly recommend you do this one do it for yourself i'm telling you this is a game changer if you're trying to eat healthy this year this is a game. This can be one of those like staple once a week meals mm -hmm. for sure. And you probably will never get over it. Mm -hmm. um, perfect for leftovers. If you, let's say you had your taco fix and you have this shrimp leftover, 
make some rice. Make a and you have this cabbage, cook it, saute it, make a quick fried rice. I lost my train of thought. I was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> And honestly, enjoy cooking. And that's what we're trying to do, promote this year is just enjoy it, have fun. Um, but I think that's about it, Rosa. I think we're just about done. Um, thanks again, you guys. Again, hit us up on YouTube if you have any questions. I'm Chef Sam. This Rosa. is Rosa. Thanks for watching Ask Rosa, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. I need to go over there now. And try these recipes. It's great. It's delicious. They're amazing.